Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. On the broadcast today, the mayor of Sparks joins us, Ed Lawson, here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Forget the weather outside, there's a blizzard of points inside the Carson Valley Inn during the 15 million points giveaways. Drawings every Thursday and Saturday, including four 1 million point winners guaranteed. And don't miss the 2 million point grand prize giveaways. It's the 15 million points giveaways at the Carson Valley Inn. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Story County is leading Nevada. Home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world-leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across Northern Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada's future. save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. I am back on Nevada Newsmakers. We're always pleased to welcome back to the program Ed Lawson. He is the mayor of Sparks. Pleasure to have you here. For our friends in Southern Nevada that may not know, uh, Reno Sparks is kind of like Las Vegas and Henderson. They're right next door to each other. Um, and it is a booming city. It is doing great. Um, let me ask you about the freeway. I-80 goes right through Sparks. And there has always been a blockage um, at the Sparks Nugget where the traffic just backs up. Um, any news on some of the changes that may be yeah, happening? It's, uh, that's in the phase two part of the spaghetti bowl enhancement. Uh, I know that the, the Nugget and NDOT are talking at this point. Part of the issue is uh, the, the freeway goes right through the middle of the casino. John Esquaga, being the great negotiator he was, was able to negotiate that space underneath for the right of way to use as casino. Um, because of the cost of doing a uh, flyover bridge is what is actually exists there now. Uh, they're going to fill it in with land. So my involvement has only been the fact that uh, the Nugget's one of our largest employers in Sparks, and we want to keep that connectivity to our downtown area. So what, what would disappear from, from what the plans are right now? You would, that all would be basically about three-quarters of the way to as you're walking north in the casino. From there on, that, that would be a walled off. Wow. It's a big chunk. And, and I'm presuming the new owners of the, the Nugget of the last couple of years know this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they're very involved. And so is Anthony Marnell's very involved. Okay, still? Oh, yes. Okay, that, that it's, it's one a, of the more fascinating people, he, he and his dad, Nevada I, Legends. I have great respect for that family and, and for Anthony in particular. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Me, me too. Um, I got a chance to talk to him uh, recently about the, uh, off the air about the Brightline train, and which his dad has been promoting since day one, uh, or at least a version of High Speed Rail. And uh, they're both going to come on the show at a time to be named, but very much looking forward to that. Um, okay, let's talk about, um, you know, Sparks in general. It is booming, but you have all the issues that go along with a boom. Uh, the main one I think that is most obvious to people is, is traffic. 
what kind of mitigation are you looking at? Because you've done a great job with Pyramid. Um, what else are we looking at in the near future? Well, you know, we've, uh, we've been working on a lands bill for yes, six want, years. Yes, sir, I wanted to get there. Well, that's, <laughs> that is probably our savior in that area. What we're going to do for developing that land out east of Sparks is using special assessment districts. So our infrastructure will be put in based on future uh, dollars so that those people who buy the land out there would pay for the infrastructure up front, in oh, essence. Okay, and, and <coughs> that is unusual. Um, Not that unusual. Vegas has about $22 billion worth of these in the, in the Vegas area. Okay, but w w what I was going to say was that it's unusual in the sense who's going to pay for that, for the, uh, for the upfront putting in of in infrastructure? It'll go to a bond. It'll go to a bond. Yeah, so, and then so the owners of the land will pay the bond off over 30 years. Okay, so it won't be the citizens who are no. paying for that. No, the people that use it, the people that live there, the people that uh, get, have their businesses there, they'll pay for it. Okay, well, and, and the part about that that's unusual is that, that normally it's difficult to make a sale to the public to, say, put in infrastructure before um, the people are there. Once the people are there, then you have the issues, and then people have no problem saying, okay, let's, let's put our tax dollars towards this. Yeah, it's, it's just a different way of doing it. It's something that we have not used in the north. Uh, we're in the process of doing one in Sparks right now kind of as a practice run on a smaller scale, of, you know, about $12 million. But we're trying to figure out where the, the pitfalls are, the goods and the bad parts of it. So, you know, we'll get through that. We'll figure it out. If it's good enough for Vegas, it's probably good enough for us. <laughs> well, to say the <laughs> least. I mean, the, the, the big question is always, you know, the length of time it takes for the permitting process and all that. How do you feel Sparks is doing? Well, if I listen to my developers, uh, we're doing very well. As you know, my campaign slogan from 2010 has been find a way to say yes. And we have made that a staple of the conversations throughout our entire city. So we find a way to say yes. We can't say yes to everything, but we'll, we maybe can find a compromise that works for both of us. Okay, now you've been on the show in the past talking about the Tajarino Industrial Center and the massive growth that's occurring out there. Um, we had one of the commissioners on the other day, the vice chairman, um, and he was talking about um, how they are now looking at housing projects out of TRI. Does that give you relief that they are actually looking at that? We're actually looking in the lands, going back to the lands bill, we have about 2,000 acres that we want to put in there that we would put housing where then they would actually live in Washoe County and work in Story County and their commute is just across the freeway. So. Uh, we have some just high, high level talks with some of the commissioners about, you know, how can we make this work? And as we get closer and we get down the road, we'll have those conversations more often. Um, the lands bill itself. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of lands bills and I've been watching this one. We, we did get the Fallon one done, um, but it looks like this one is just stuck in the mire uh, for at least this year. Um, or, do you, or do you have any optimism that it could go through this year? Well, I'm forever optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like it. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, I listened to uh, Congressman Amade on your show, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I agree with them that, you know, there's people just don't understand how big Nevada is and how much of our land is government-owned, federally owned. And, and what we're talking about, it sounds like a tremendous amount of acreage and hundreds of thousands of acres but it represents like 0.001% of all the federal land in Nevada. So it's, it's a tiny, tiny bit. But for us in Sparks, we are out of land. So our next goal in order to keep growing, because the Constitution of the state of Nevada is most regressive property tax system in the United States, we have to grow up. And I don't want to be San Francisco, but it looks like we're going to end up being San Francisco if we don't get, number one, the property tax change or a lands bill. Okay, and when you say go, you, you literally mean vertically. B building vertically. But doesn't that also make the most sense in a lot of ways, you know, in terms of water and, uh, you know, pollution, et cetera? It, it does and it doesn't. It's a lifestyle thing. You know, I, I grew up in Las Vegas. You know, when Vegas was, I left for college in 78. It was 300,000 people. I, that wide open expanses, I love. I came here 35 years ago, and I love the wide open expanses. So for me to be, 
become a San Francisco. I never did like going to San Francisco. I still don't. The traffic's horrible. The, the people are not as friendly. I mean, it's just not this lifestyle that I, I want to live. And I don't think that many of our Sparks residents want to live that life either. To a certain extent, you've already gone down that road with uh, the uh, downtown Sparks um, by the Nugget. Um, there's all these tower blocks. I mean, they get the benefit of concerts every weekend with top name yeah. artists. Um, that, but and that's part of our growth pattern, though. And we're calling that's our downtown city center. We're, we have an Audi Boulevard city center that will be high density. And then we'll have a river city center. All this based on uh, the land spill. If, you know, for the river, we have the most beautiful river in America, runs right through Sparks. We have tilt up concrete on it. We should have people and families and bicycles and walkers and fishermen and all those people that can recreate on the on the Truckee River. You know, the problem is that this kind of redevelopment isn't done overnight. It's, no, it it's 30 plus years. I mean, I remember talking to a redevelopment officer in the city of Reno years ago, <laughs> 30 years ago, and I said, how long does it take to redevelop an area? He said, 30 years. Yeah. And when you look what uh, Jeff Griffin did when he was the mayor of Reno, put, I mean, the, the noise about putting a movie theater on the river uh, was mind blowing. Now it's a place where tons of people want to go. Yeah, and they look at the success of, uh, I forgot the name of the park down there, but it's a beautiful park. People go there in the summertime yeah, and they I'd hang watch. out. I, yeah, well, and there's another smaller one. Uh, Wingfield. Wingfield. Yes. I didn't want to confuse it with Wingfield and Sparks. Right, <laughs> uh, but 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 yes, you're you're absolutely right. It's a beautiful area. We we've seen a lot of things, but at the same time, I mean, it's still going through redevelopment issues mm -hmm. with the Harris property shutting down in downtown Reno, um, and all the issues that they've had with financing, etc. Um, you know, you still have eyesores there, but that's part of that, life. It is part of it. Uh, you know, we have some stoppage of building in downtown Sparks at this time. Uh, we because feel because of uh, the, we had a divorce between partners, <laughs> oh. you know, the, some stuff that's out of our control. But it, it is part of it. But if you don't start, you'll never get to 30 years. I agree. So uh, that's my whole deal is we better start now because 20 years from now, 10 years from now, uh, it, we start, we've lost it. D you know, Mike Kazmierski, <clears throat> when he was with Edon, said, that we were looking at needing 5,000 new homes a year for 10 years. Um, did he underestimate the number of homes we're going to need when you continue to see the growth that's going on in Story County? And which, is, which is forcing growth into Sparks exactly, as well. Exactly, because they don't have housing. I mean, think about this. Is you have 30,000 jobs in Story County right now with 4,200 residents in the entire county. And they're expected to be at 60,000 jobs in the next five to eight years. Every one of those companies out there doubling, Google's coming, I and mean, all these big giant corporations are coming where money is not an object for them. So they can build and they don't, it doesn't really matter how much it costs. And we're getting fully 50% of our people are coming from the tech industry in California to move here because our houses are cheap. <laughs> and we're all saying, man, the houses are- By comparison. Yeah, right? exactly. But you know, we're saying 600,000 for an average median house is outrageous for us, but over in, in the Bay Area, that's cheap. Right. That's, that's a third of the price of a house there. So it's, we're getting that, and, and that's, once again, going back to, I don't want to be San Francisco, and that's what we're going to end up being. If we don't have the land to build we don't, or expand or to rejigger our property taxes, then we are going to have to do, we're going to have to build vertical. And when we build vertical, there's a lot of, problems that come along with that. One is being the cost. And two by four still costs what a two by four costs. So there's no such thing as affordable housing. There's subsidized housing and there's market rate. That's the only two kinds of housing there is. All right, but I mean, realistically, when do you think a lands bill could get passed? Do you think we're gonna have to wait past it, the presidential election? If it doesn't happen this year, we're two years away again. It's, 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 this is the end of this Congress is this Christmas. Right. If it doesn't happen in this Congress, it has to start all over again in the next Congress. You know, the reality is it's, it's actually September. You don't even have until Christmas. Because by the time we go, <coughs> we do Nevada Newsmakers goes to Washington every September. And they are rushing to get out of there because there's campaigning. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just not going to be there. 
Um, mm. So it, it's, a, it's a very tight timeline. Um, but that continues to cause problems, not just for you, but I mean, all the surrounding areas. Do you see, as I have, that, and this is potential, that the future pushes towards not just Sparks, because Sparks is already so busy, but it pushes towards Fernley, Fallon, where people will be more comfortable commuting, maybe on nice RTC type buses with Wi-Fi, uh, where a 30 minute ride to work is a lot better than a three hour commute in the Bay Area? It will to a point because of water. Water is everything. The old saying is right. <laughs> whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting. That's the biggest problem. You literally have to go down to Urington into Smith Valley, Mason Valley, in order to get water. So that, if, could I see Urington becoming a boom town? Absolutely. But I don't see this other towns just because there's not enough water to support the growth. Okay, and you don't think the Vidla has enough water if they're a new developer you owner? No, they, they still got to get it here somehow. Right, but I mean, we've seen, for example, the North Valleys of Reno uh, got water from Fish, Fish Springs Ranch. Um, the, there was a huge 20-odd year fight over that, uh, but the water came there. There's a lot of water associated with Winnemucca Farms. Is there any talk about perhaps importing that or trying I, to? I know that I've had some high-level talks with Vidler and and their pipeline basically ends right there in the North Valleys. And they want to pipe it out to Story County and, and all the county south. Um, since they were bought by, I forgot who, who bought them. Was it, it Ryder one, Homes? Uh, no, it's not Ryder, it, but it's one of the big uh, home developers. Yeah. So they actually bought them out and, and are handling that. <clears throat> I, I, I think the water's the biggest issue at this point. And then once you have water in, you got to have water out. So, how, you know, you got to build a sewer plants and you got to build them to the point, and part of that is you got to, then you throw on the Truckee River operating agreement or the TROA agreement that took 28 years to 30, get done. Yeah, 30 years. That you now dealing with the Indians to figure out how to make that work. The quality of the sewage go, or the, the water that's been treated going back into the Truckee is always an issue. You can't have put any extra water in there and you can't take any more out. All right, let's take a break right there because let's get back and talk about sewer because I'm really interested in this <laughs> right after this timeout. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you. Safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators. From the exotic to the everyday. Trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Ed Lawson. He is the mayor of Sparks, Nevada, right next door to Reno. Um, you started talking about sewer. And I used to think in the past that the limit on growth was going to be air. But in talking to Washoe County uh, Health Department, they say, no, the, the particulate is not the issue anymore. But it seems to me the biggest issue is going to be the sewer plant and increasing that uh, capacity for that sewer plant. Where are we with that? And why do so many people not want to talk to me about it? It's a complicated subject. You wouldn't think it would be so complicated, but it is. <clears throat> There's you, and you're operating with some very very restrictive ordinances and, and laws within the state. Um, we just had a fast shutdown where we got a letter from NDEP 
and said that uh, we're going to quit approving uh, final maps unless you know this, that, and the other thing are, are met. Uh, that threw a <laughs> large flag in the air for everyone. Um, we have we operate the plant and we're uh, partners with Reno. Sparks ops operates the plant. We have a new guy in charge who is we call him the boy genius. This guy is amazing. He's cleaned our water by half. So wow. what's going into the river now is the cleanest water in America is going back into the river. So uh, he's done a, a wonderful job. That's not helping our capacity though. Uh, capacity's capacity. Uh, we have a 65-year-old plant with 65-year-old technology, so you can only improve that to such a level. At some point, now going back to the land spill, you need another sewer plant or additional sewer plants or other place sewer plants, which we have around the valleys, but we need one for Sparks. Okay, so are we talking about a billion-dollar project? To revamp the existing sewer plant is easily a billion dollars. And if and you if you were to build a new one, somewhere between a hundred and two hundred million. And where would you get that money? SADs from the special assessment districts. All right. We've already talked about that with some of our developers. Okay, so so it will be the developers. Part of the infrastructure would be the new sewer to plant. So the the would the public bear any of the cost? Mm, other than paying the fees but those people that are using it are the ones paying the fees. How far out do you think that is? And, and what's the limit on oh. growth? How far out before you could get the sewer plant going? How far out is the lands bill? I mean, that's what it's tied to. So, so you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You're gonna be at a point where you can't build anymore. Correct. If you don't, how close? How close are we now? Are we a year out, two years out? We did a, uh, there was a land study done by the business community. We, we run out of residential land in 27. Wow, three years. Let's take another break. We'll be right back. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Welcome to the Winnemucca Big R. Hi, I'm John Walker. Welcome to Big R Love Lock. Hi, I'm Rich Martin. Welcome to Fallon Big R. My name is Braden. Welcome to Big R Friendly. Hi, I'm Kelly. Welcome to Big R Sparks. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Ed Lawson. He is the mayor of Sparks. By the way, does it bother you that the Reno Gazette Journal's staff is so small now that they can't cover Sparks? No, not really. We're, we're happy with Reno being in the press every day. <laughs> would, would you not like, I mean, you've got the Sparks Tribune, which has been around forever, mm -hmm. but it's not a heavily funded newspaper. No. Would you like to see a, 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 a newspaper, uh, a minimum covering the business of Sparks? You know, it, it's something we've just grown used to. We figure at one point we're going to be Dallas-Fort Worth. You know, it's big one big city, same similar to Vegas. Even though we all call it Vegas, we know that there's what five different cities yeah. down there. So, right. it, it's it's just part of who we are. All right, forty-five seconds left here. Um, Audi Boulevard, uh, mm -hmm. RTC is doing a major rebuild on that project. Um, what are the the highlights that you're looking at coming out of that rebuild? For me, it's the uh, pedestrian and bicycle ways that go along uh, the Audi Boulevard so that you can have bicycles in one area and pedestrians in another area for the safety factor and, and then uh, you know the new road because that is one of our areas we're going to concentrate on for density. Um, what I understand is in that shopping center where the grocery store was that there's not going to be a grocery store. Is that correct? You know, I couldn't tell you exactly what was. We, we get to have a meeting with people who comes to us all the time that say, well, we want to do this and we want to do that. And, you know, Copper Canyon, great example. 
ever since I've been elected, there's probably been seven different owners come to us and say, we want to do this, we want to do that, and then nothing ever happens. So I don't know exactly, but we're, we're pushing for apartments and density. Um, at this point, would you agree that Sparks is in boom times? I would say, you know, we, uh, we've grown by 6,000 residents since the census in 2020. So, yes, we're, we're booming pretty well. It's a great place to live. We have great people, very family-oriented. Uh, our parks are awesome and clean. And we have uh, all-ability play parks, two of them, one at the marina and one out uh, at Para. I mean, just beautiful places to bring your family. And that's where we have to leave it, Ed Lawson, Mary Thank Sparks. You. Thanks for being here, man. I always appreciate you being here. My pleasure. Thank you, and we'll be right back. We're at Tamarack Casino at Nevada Steak with Chef Mike Mahoney. You have fabulous food here. This halibut is extraordinary. The halibut was awesome. It was fun to cook. You get a nice sear on top, and then we base that with a little bit of butter and garlic and herbs and stuff. It's, it's fabulous. It's a lot of butter. It and is. it looks really good, and it tastes even better. I'm trying this, which is the crab cake. You've got this crispy coating on the outside. What is that? Actually, that's cornflakes. Huh? Cornflakes. Really? Yes, sir. It, the crispiness of the cornflake just adds more crispiness to the already, you know, crispy crab cake. It's, it's awesome. It's my favorite, and I'm a crab cake fanatic. Okay, this I just tried for the first time. It's ahi tuna mm -hmm. in a whole different way. Ahi tuna. It's a tuna tartare. It's ground up. Uh, we mix it with a little bit of spicy mayo, a little avocado puree, and our house-made ponzu sauce in there as well. It tastes to me like sushi without the rice. It's, it's got all the flavorings, but it's absolutely delicious. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. All right, ribeye steak. Ribeye steak, classic. Harris Ranch, certified Angus beef. You can't go wrong with a good steak here. Uh, no, and that ribeye is particularly good. Um, again, we tried that earlier. Mm -hmm. It is fabulous. Yeah. The wedge salad. Um, I love a white salad that comes with a giant hunk of bacon on it. So you've got healthy and you've got bacon. A little bit of indulgence. Wrong? Yeah, a little indulge. Uh, what's great about this one is the bacon is cooked fresh to order for every single salad. So it's nice and hot. Folks, you've got to come to Tamarack, the casino in South Reno. It is a fabulous place to begin with. It's made even more fabulous by Nevada Steak and your great food. Thank you for inviting us. And we will be coming back over and over because I'm in love with this tuna, I'm in love with the crab cake, well the ribeye, well the halibut, it's all good folks. Just about everything. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suite. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Thanks for watching Nevada Newsmakers. You can catch us online 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com or you can download the podcast wherever you like to get your podcasts. We'll see you on the next broadcast.